Hey guys. So, I'm not a videographer, um, but uh, I've had a lot of questions on how I set my toys up for running at the back of the boat, uh, dive boards and dongle. Um, the way I did this was shown to me by an old commercial fisherman, and so I wanted to share it with you. On the uh, dive boards, um, this is a Yozuri K-type dive board. Uh, one thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you protect the edges because um, that's going to affect how the board uh, tracks in the water and if you damage the board um, it can have uh, adverse effects on how the, uh, the lure is going to uh, present in the water. Um, So here's an example of a damaged board. This was uh, damaged because the board got caught up in the prop and uh, chopped a big chunk out of it. Oddly enough, it looked like the uh, dive board was actually tracking fine in the, wa in the water, but the one thing that I noticed was that uh, that board uh, almost completely stopped producing fish. So. Uh, I don't have an answer for that other than to say that uh, obviously there was something going on in the water that I think was uh, affecting how the lure was presenting and the fish were shying away from that board. So even though it looked like it was tracking okay, it stopped producing and I got rid of that one. Anyway, back to the boards. So on the... Uh, Dive boards, what I do is they, they come with some strings that come through in the front and the back, and I cut those out. Uh, they're junk, they're um, very flimsy and thin. So, what I've done here is I, I cut those out and I added in some hardware. This is stainless steel eye bolts right here, and it's uh, 1032. Um, I'm sorry, 1024 size threads with a lock nut and a washer on the, the side. Having the nut hanging down like this actually doesn't affect how it tracks. Um, and then you'll see here what I did is I, I cut the, uh, the bolt off uh, to make it a little bit more flush. Um, by doing that, uh, it... Uh, helps with the uh, tracking in the water and then what I do is I carefully suck the eye bolt down into the board slightly so that uh, nothing is going to get hung up on that uh, on that eye bolt where it curves around and touches the shank right down in there so I just threw a, a uni knot on there and then this has 44 feet of 300 pound P cord or uh, tuna cord um, and then I run a 10 foot lead on this uh, off the back so I just have a snap swivel it's attached with a swivel here and a snap swivel here and the reason that I do that is because um, I want that to be able to uh, move naturally and spin freely and then on this snap swivel is where I'm running the uh, clone and I usually run my leaders off my clones at six feet so uh, these have done really really well for me um, what you do is you put them in the water you throw them out tie, tie this end off to the boat right here sorry I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself tie this end off to the boat right here Here's some bungee cords because when the uh, tuna hit, um, they're, they're hitting the, the gear at about 50 miles an hour and if you just have the tuna cord which doesn't give at all, uh, you're liable to rip the face right off the fish or uh, rip the, uh, the hook right out of its mouth. So you want it to be able to give and these uh, bungees work well for that. And then the way I've tied it is it's, it's got a stopper in case the bungee comes apart or something big hits it. So it's a, it's a limiting strap, if you will, that just goes from one side to the other. 
So once you've tied this off to the boat, I use the back of the handrails at the transom. You're going to unwind your gear, throw it out in the water, and uh, what you need, to, it's going to be upside down, and what you need it to do is to flip right side up so it's sitting like this. And once it sits like this, if you just give the tuna cord a tug, it uh, sucks that dive board right down and it'll send it down to whatever depth you've got set based on the length of the tuna cord. And that's how I'm setting my gear up. So once again, I'm just tying an, a loop over here with a snap swivel. And uh, then I've got, there's the snap swivel. And it is literally that easy. So there's that. And then I run the uh, uh, feed buckets you can get at your local farm store. Um, and that's so that you can tie it off to the handrail. And then uh, as you hand line your gear in, you can just wrap it right into there. Uh, and then feed it right back out again. Um, you're just trying to contain your gear to make it a little bit easier to deal with. The nice thing about these buckets is they're super sturdy and uh, they've got a flat face here which is really nice for putting right against the gunnel. Here's the dongle also made by Uzuri. I forget what they call these. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. It's the same basic principle. Uh, it comes with a swivel and it's a pretty heavy duty one so I've always left that on there. And then I've got uh, my length of tuna cord and it's the same setup. I've got a, uh, a bungee cord with a limiter on it. And then over here uh, I've got my 10 feet of lead coming off of the back of it with the uh, swivel and the snap swivel and it's the same thing. I run this one right in the middle and this is actually more of a noise maker than anything. It rides on top of the water and it's what it's supposed to be doing is simulating a uh, bird uh, or a uh, injured fish because uh, this flat face right here splashes and uh, makes a commotion which the uh, tuna fish are attracted to. Um, so I run two dive boards, one on either quarter, corner of the transom, and uh, I run the dongle here right in the middle in the shotgun position uh, right off of the handrail between the main and the kicker. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a little bit off center towards the port side, but that's okay. And then same bucket set up, and then I've got another uh, bucket with another dive board. Uh, back in the bedroom there. So <clears throat> there'll be uh, three of these small black buckets on the boat and uh, as we're hand lining fish in it's really handy to be able to coil the rope into it, I'm sorry, the uh, um, tuna cord into it and then uh, quickly feed it back out. Obviously you want to get your gear back out as soon as possible because you, you don't have the gear in the water you're not fishing um, and then when I'm out on the water what I'll do is I'll uh, do a attachment to this and uh, show you guys what we're doing when we're hand lining stuff in putting it back out and uh, how to flip the boards around and deal with those uh, it can be a little tricky um, there's been a few times where the the die board has gotten in close to the to the water or to the uh, the prop and there's ways to uh, be able to keep it out of the prop uh, unfortunately one of my crew wasn't uh, paying attention and let the prop suck it right in um, which it will do the prop is uh, uh, generating a suction obviously so that's something you got to be careful of so there's how I'm setting my gear up 